بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از عبد الرحمن کاہی اینڈ یو آر واچنگ اینیملس پروڈکشن پریکٹسز ان ٹو ڈے لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ڈفرینٹ فیڈنگ اسٹینڈرڈس دی ریکوائرمنٹس آف دی باڈی آف دی اینیملس دی پروڈکشن فیس ریکوائرمنٹس آر دی لیکٹیٹنگ فیس ریکوائرمنٹس واٹ آر دوز اسٹینڈرڈس وی مے فالو while feeding the animals the requirements may change over the age over the require need but we must follow the different standards to feed the animals and this may lead to the successful production of the animals <coughs> feeding standards may be allowances are the tables feeding standards are the nutritional allowances are the tables showing the amount of the food and specific nutrients which should be provided to different species these are the allowances and these allowances are uh, listed in these tables show and those tables are containing the different uh, requirements of the body and these requirements are ultimately be provided to the animals for their production for their lactation for their growth and reproduction but the <coughs> these requirements may be these uh, feeding standards may be follow up to get up the growth fattening of the animals reproduction of the animals re lactation requirements as so training ex exercise like the trot animals this training exercise means the animals having hard exercise that are reared that are uh, reared for the purposes of the drought purposes such animals have to be provided the different feeding standards especially the energy based diets they serve as guides in the feeding animals and in estimating the adequacy of the feed intake these are the feeding standards which are the guidelines for the farmer for the owner of the animals that are for the manager or the supervisor of the farms that these animals these are the feedings these are the feeding requirements these are the available resources these are the feeding <coughs> feeding standards we have to follow while providing the food to the animal while providing the forage or the silage or the other ingredients to the animals and this will ultimately tell us the adequacy of the feed intake we fcr of the animal we may conclude from this feed intake feeding standards we may follow for the production of the animals are enlisted here the very first one which is very famous and mostly follow in the most of the mm, i would like to say the continents especially in the pakistan the scientists uh, while researching they follow the very first one the national research council nrc of the usa these are the very complete uh, very simple but most researched most researched standards <coughs> the next one is the nutrient requirements of the date dairy cattle beef cattle and the nutrient requirements of the sheep and the goats and the poultry and the fishes and the fish the these are the feeding standards we may follow to take up the animals to rear the animals to feed them the animal to feed the animals or the nutrient requirements of the animals may be adjusted according to the feeding standards provided in, in these all feeding charts there are different advantages of following the feeding standards some of the advantages are listed here these are the feeding standards which serve as a general guide for the manager to feed the livestock like in the summers i the winter or in the pregnancy period or in the lactation period what to feed how to feed and what amount of uh, to feed 
these are the standards which we may uh, get from the different standards like the NRC. Give an idea about the total feed and nutrient requirement of the energy specific for physiological functions. Now we uh, just take the example of lactating animal and we know if an animal is mil giving us the 2 liter, suppose 2 liter milk a day, we must know the requirement, energy requirement, protein requirement of that such animal which is providing us the 2 liter milk and depending upon those energy requirements or protein requirements we may follow the different standards to provide them the energy and the protein as per the requirement and it is also practical feeding purposes we may follow the different standards to practical feeding of the animal and the fourth advantage of the feeding standards is the planning the experiments interpreting the result if one is the researcher and he has to do research on the animals and have to follow the different standards while performing the experiments and we may get the results or the interpret the results before the actual results he may interpret the results that uh, if we uh, while planning if he, uh, he is making the feasibility report he may get to know that if I provide uh, uh, 4 kg or the uh, 4 liter uh, or different uh, nutrient requirements may be provided to the animals useful for calculation of the total requirements of the herd and thus helps in the planning of the feed schedule for the future if one can actually calculate the requirement of the herd suppose the herd may be of uh, 500 animal 1000 animal if one uh, is able to calculate the requirement of the whole of the herd and thus helps in the planning of the feeding schedule for the future like the crops to grow like the amount uh, to be stored for the whole period of the season or the other are the other required uh, standards they which have to follow during the whole year the other things may be calculated upon the feeding standards for the future being flexible feeding standards may be modified as per demands availability and cost of feeding stuff the cost of the feeding stuff is really really matter as in some places at some places the cost of one thing may be very low but at some other place the cost of same thing same quality material may be up higher as much higher so we should <coughs> make the decision upon the price and the economic of the production that uh, what to feed and uh, where to feed from what to feed and uh, same as it what uh, what uh, type of to to be fed to the animal as per the advantages of the feeding standards there are some limitations of the feeding standards which if we follow we may get limitation or uh, the disadvantages we may get the different uh, lags uh, in there in the standards as the standards are make uh, are made upon the different results or uh, different results or the experiments conducted at a, a specific place but these are not the global standards we may not consider them as a global standard to be followed by the managers as the feeding standards are unable to indicate whether or not two animals are fed properly this is the major indication that uh, whether the <coughs> now while providing the animals food according to a specific standard we may not get able to get a uh, news that uh, are the we may not get the info that the animal are fed properly or not animal are satisfying or not animals are able to get food properly or uh, they are enjoying their feeding or not we may not get the information by these standards and similarly 
the standards cannot become complete guide to feeding of animals and hence difficult to use as a ruler to follow the feeding standards we must be kept in mind that these are the not complete guide as these as i discussed earlier as i told earlier that these are not for a global to uh, parameters these are conducted at a specific place at a, on the specific standards in the specific environment these are uh, at uh, some other place in the world these standards may be changed these standards may be changed according to the uh, environmental conditions and the next one is may not be useful under the situations where palatability and the physical nature of the fed alterates voluntary intake and thus its requirement as the same thing is ke what the whether the animals are enjoying the feed are they are satisfied are they are able to get into feed are they are able to get the food into their uh, stomach no these standards does not tell us these or uh, answer all these questions no so we must be kept in mind that these standards are not the complete guide the further is environment and uh, climatic conditions may alter the nutrient metabolism and therefore these cannot be useful in all such conditions the environment or the climatic conditions matter at very much as these are going to alter the nutrient requirements or the nutrient metabolism nutrient nature of the plants or the food so that does matter when we must consider the climatic and environmental conditions while performing or planning for the feeding of the animal <coughs> it may change according to the genetic makeup the genetic makeup of the animal is depending upon the production uh, performance or the production capability of the animal or the size of the animal or the uh, abilities of the animal to perform different task reproductive behavior these are all genetic uh, makeup and we must follow these standards these genetic uh, abilities while uh, planning for the feeding standards and the feeding standards does not tell all these standards all these genetic scenarios that's all about today lecture continue watching animals production practices thank you very much